Good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is February the 7th. It's Monday morning and it's a beautiful day here in Beaver Dam. And I'm happy that you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is the time where we gather Monday through Thursday to uh, read some scripture together and uh, to uh, reflect and pray on the scripture as well. So I am glad to see that Dick and Nancy are joining us and Karen's joining us this morning. And uh, my mom and Flo, all sorts of people jumping on there this morning. Well, good morning. Uh, you know, it is, it is Monday and Jacket and Mary Helen, well, good morning. Oh, wow, yeah, well, this is good. So uh, we have been using our revised common lectionary as the basis for our readings and we've been uh, using the psalm reading for the entire week, reading it from different uh, translations of the text. And then uh, we have another reading. So we're doing the same thing today. Our first reading this morning is uh, Psalm 115. Uh, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. So Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us. No, but to your own name give glory because of your loyal love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where's their God now? Our God is in heaven. He can do whatever he wants. Their idols are just silver and gold, things made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. They have eyes but cannot see. They have ears but they can't hear. They have noses, but they can't smell. They have hands, but they can't feel. They have feet, but they can't walk. They can't even make a noise in their throats. Let the people who made these idols and all who trust in them become just like them. But you, Israel, trust in the Lord. God is their help and shield. Trust in the Lord, house of Aaron. God is their help and shield. You who honor the Lord, trust in the Lord. God is their help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. God will bless the house of Israel. God will bless the house of Aaron. God will bless those who honor the Lord from the smallest to the greatest. May the Lord add to your numbers, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heaven belongs to the Lord, but he gave the earth to all people. The dead won't praise the Lord, nor do those who go down in silence. But us, we will bless the Lord from now until forever from now. That's some pretty good words from, uh, from the psalmist this morning. And then our next reading this morning comes from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 through 40. Let's listen to what Paul has for us this morning. What is the outcome of this, brothers and sisters? When you meet together, each one has a psalm, a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All these things must be done to build up the church. If some speak in tongue, then let two or at the most three speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. However, if there's no interpreter, then they should keep quiet in their meeting. They should speak privately to themselves and to God. In case of the prophets, let two or three speak and have the rest evaluate what is said. And if some revelation comes to someone else who is sitting down, the first one should be quiet. You can all prophesy one at a time so that everyone can learn and be encouraged. The spirits of the prophets are under the control of the prophets. God isn't a God of disorder, but of peace. Like in all churches of God's people, the women should be quiet during the meeting. They are not to be allowed to talk. Instead, they need to get under, get under control, just as the law says. 
If they want to learn something, they should ask their husbands at home. It is disgraceful for a woman to talk during the meeting. Did the word of God originate with you, has come only to you? If anyone thinks that they are prophets or spiritual people, then let them recognize what I'm writing to you is the Lord's command. If someone doesn't recognize this, they aren't recognized. So then, brothers and sisters, use your ambition to try to get the gift of prophecy, but don't prevent speaking in tongues. Everything should be done with dignity and in proper order. Well, friends, uh, some interesting words from Paul this morning. So let's, uh, let's take a, a couple of minutes here and uh, let's reflect upon the scripture and see how it speaks to us today. And as you do, um, I'll invite you to, to focus on uh, this line from the psalm this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. To your own name give glory. Lord, to your own name, give glory. Lord, to your own name, give glory. Lord, to your own name, give glory. Amen, amen. So uh, we're continuing to use the Wesley Study Bible for our notes. And uh, the ones for uh, this particular section uh, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians reads, reads this way. Every aspect of worship must build up the church and be done in order. Tongues are not forbidden in verse 39 but limited to two or three instances, as long as they are interpreted. Prophecy is open to all as long as everyone waits their turn. So, and this is about uh, the next section I'm getting ready to read is for verses 34 through 35, which uh, talk about women in worship and how they're supposed to be silent. So let's see what, uh, what these notes say. 
Some doubt whether these verses were actually written by Paul rather than added by a later by later scribes. In any case, they do not fit well into Paul's argument. If original, they likely address the issue some women of some women disrupting worship with questions, not pay attention, not paying attention, pay, not their praying or prophesizing during worship, which Paul clearly allowed. Some uh, interesting, interesting notes this morning. Um, there are a couple of things that, that definitely jump out at, out at me in this text. And one is um, the order of worship, that everything that we do in, or, in worship should be intentional, that we should give time for people to speak in tongues as long as there is interpretation and that uh, we should take the time to prophesy and have the message. You know, that that part of the text reminded me of the time I went to licensing school and how they told us that everything that we do during worship should have theological intent, which means it should be pointing us to God. From the opening announcements to the benediction, everything that we do in worship should in some way glorify God. And that's what I try to do, especially during our, our Sunday morning worship times. And I was wondering this morning how we can take that that concept, that theological intent, and apply it to the rest of our lives in the way that uh, everything that we should do in the world should be pointing to God, should have our theology behind it, should be glorifying God and pointing others to God. And I wonder if we all truly embrace that, what a beautiful place we would live in. Well, that was, that was one of my thoughts. The other thought I had, of course, surrounded uh, those verses about uh, women staying silent and not speaking in worship and uh, asking their husbands questions at home. Y'all, I can definitely tell you, I do not think uh, that is the case. And I think uh, a lot of people have taken that, those particular texts out of context and tried to apply them to our world today when they were really meant uh, for that particular culture and a particular situation that Paul was trying to address uh, in the church in Corinth. Um, I did find some notes in, uh, in one of my other study Bibles that I thought I would share with you uh, pertaining to those verses. And this is verses 34 and 35 again. Does this mean that women should not speak in church services today? It is clear from ch uh, chapter 11, verse 5, that women prayed and prophesied in public worship. It is also clear in chapters 12 through 14 that women are given spiritual gifts and encouraged to exercise them in the body of Christ. Women have much to contribute and can participate in worship service. In the Corinthian culture, women were not allowed to confront men in public. Apparently, some of the women who had become Christians thought their Christian freedom gave them the right to question men in public worship. This was causing a division in the church. In addition, women of the day did not receive formal religious education, as did the men. Women may have been raising questions in worship services that have get, could have been answered at home without disrupting the service. Paul was asking the women not to flaunt their Christian freedom during worship. The purpose of Paul's words was to promote unity, not to teach about women's role in church. So I thought that kind of helped um, a little, but you know, it still doesn't really, it still didn't really speak to the idea um, that we are all equal and that women have an important place in worship as much as men and that we share, um, we share the, the, the opportunity to glorify God together. Well, just some random thoughts of mine. I would love to hear your reflections on this text. Let me know what, you, what you're thinking. And uh, 
let's uh let's get ready to go and take on this nice sunny day let's uh go to the lord in prayer this morning let us pray gracious and heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful sunny day god we thank you that uh spring should be right around the corner and uh things will get warmer and greener and the days will get longer and uh we just are looking forward to that time but lord with all of that coming that's coming let us not to forget to focus on today to focus on ways that uh we can show your love to those around us to focus on um what it means to worship and glorify you in everything that we do. God, we ask that you be with all of those who might be hurting today, whether they're grieving the loss of, of a loved one or grieving a big change in their lives, because change can be tough. God, we just ask that you wrap them and wrap all of us in your loving arms. Let us feel your presence let us reach out and understand your love for us on a deeper level. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. Bye for now.